What was your advice to President Reagan during the Iran-Contra affair? I was against what was going on, and I said so vehemently, and so did my counterpart, Secretary of Defense, Casper Weinberger. We both opposed it. Mm -hmm. It was something done by the NSC staff and with a lot of participation by the CIA people, and they were wrong. And they, they hooked President Reagan by saying, we should do all this with Iran. And by the way, Mr. President, we'll get our hostages back. We our hostages were behind in Lebanon. And what it amounted to was arms for hostages. And the, but the president had felt, here I'm, I'm president of the United States, and here are these Americans being mistreated, and I can't do anything about it. I want to do something about it. So this was his chance. And, and I said, look, the media, you, you pay for a hostage, you give an incentive for people to take more hostages. Mm -hmm. So it's a bad policy. So finally, after a leak, there was a big fight, and in the end, it stopped. You write in your book, Turmoil and Triumph, that you told President Reagan that he was being lied to on Iran-Contra by members of his administration. Why were his advisors deliberately keeping him in the dark and lying to him? Well, I think they were presenting a, a wrong picture of what we were getting from Iran. And maybe lied to is too strong a word. Maybe they actually believed it. If they did, they were dumb. But I think they, want, they sort of had this idea that somehow we can do a, a Nixon to China deal with Iran and just wasn't in the cards at all. And how did you, unlike many of your colleagues in the administration, manage to be so committed to your ethical principles despite being under such enormous pressures as Secretary of State? Well, I think everybody, it's a misconception that somehow goes around that people in Washington aren't trying to do the best thing for the country. Practically everybody is. They have differences of opinion about how that happens. And sometimes they can get carried away. Mm -hmm. But it's a patriotic place. So I don't buy all this business that can be bought. At times, you had a somewhat tense relationship with some of President Reagan's other top advisors, including, um, you mentioned, Defense Secretary Weinberger and National Security Advisor Bill Clark. Why did they clash with you, and do you think that was for power? Well, they may have had some differences. And Weinberger, I knew well. When I was director of the budget, he was my deputy. When I was president of Bechtel, he was our general counsel. So he had worked for me. And maybe he was being, okay, I'm an equal now. But at any rate, he had a different opinion about dealing how to deal with the Soviets. And he didn't take the problem of terrorism nearly as seriously as I did. Those were the two things we disagreed about. They were genuine disagreements. Um, at one time, though, there's an interesting entry in President Reagan's diary. He said, Cap and Bill, that's Bill Casey, who was director of the CIA, Captain Bill came to see me to tell me that I should ask George to resign because of what he's doing with the Soviet Union. But what George is doing with the Soviet Union is what I want him to do. So maybe I should ask Captain Bill to resign. <laughs> but he didn't. You also write that you went to talk to the president about your own contentious relationship with them. Why do you think the president was at times surprised and not always aware of the in fighting in his own administration. I think he understood what was going on. It didn't bother him. And on reflection, it always seemed to me, you're talking about issues of tremendous moment. Mm -hmm. And if nobody ever argues or disagrees, you should be alarmed. You should want to be a lot of thought and back and forth. So it didn't bother me.